Hi, I'm Bob Warfield from CNC Cookbook. Today I want to talk about how to choose tools for CNC work. If you're a beginner, you know there are hundreds if not thousands of different kinds of cutting tools to choose from. This multi-part video series is all about teaching you how to choose the best one for your job. This slide tells you the basic factors that will influence which tool you need to choose. Your tool choice depends on these four things. What kind of feature are you machining? For example, is it a hole, a pocket, or something else? Number two, what are the capabilities of your CNC machine? For example, CNC routers have high spindle speeds that limit the use of larger diameter tooling. Number three, what material are you machining? Titanium is a lot different than wood in terms of cutters. And number four, cost, efficiency, and other premature optimizations. We can do a lot with just those four areas and the interactions between them to help you make the best tool choices. Factor number one, what kind of feature are you machining, is the most important because it's going to determine the general category and perhaps also the size of tool you'll use. Questions two and three will limit the overall choices further from the list you get out of number one to more specific tools. Factor number four deals with cost, efficiency, and similar considerations. I'm going to suggest right now that you leave it aside as a beginner because it's a premature optimization. As a beginner, you're not ready to delve into all those trade-offs and special tricks but even more importantly, you don't need all that. You're just trying to make your first few parts as quickly and easily as possible. You'll get there and you won't miss much by waiting before you delve into these things. So let's go ahead and dive into these things one by one. First, let's look at what kinds of feature types there are in CNC work. This is going to be your most important factor in determining what kind of tool to use so we start here. The term feature refers to the features on the part you're trying to make. A hole is a feature, for example. Here are the basic feature types we want to concern ourselves with. Holes and hole-related features, such as threads in the hole or countersinking. Pockets, which may have islands. 2D profiles and bosses, which are areas that stick up from a surface. 3D profiles cutting outlines, edge treatments such as chamfers and rounding, surfacing, and engraving. Here's some good news. The majority of these features use an end mill of one kind or another with just a few exceptions, but we're going to go into each feature to see exactly how to choose the right tool. This video is all about tooling for making holes, so that's where we're going to start. All right. The most common feature of all in CNC work is hole. And the most common way to make a hole is with a twist drill. That's because twist drills remove material very quickly. In fact, you might be surprised to know twist drills can remove material more quickly than almost any other kind of CNC cutter. They only do a specialized kind of material removal, and that's making a cylindrical hole, but still, they're very good at it. The trouble spots you'll want to be on the lookout for are problems with large diameter holes, problems with very deep holes, and problems with harder materials. For beginners, I'm not going to talk a lot about the harder materials except to suggest that at some point you'll want to invest in carbide twist drills when working with hard materials like titanium. They're a lot more expensive, so again, probably not a place for the beginner, but we should look at these other two areas. Now, before I dive in, I want to mention something that a lot of beginners aren't familiar with, and that's the difference between screw machine and jobber length twist drills. Most people are in home workshops, especially, are used to jobber length twist drills. But for most CNC work, a screw machine length is preferable. And that's because the shorter bits have a lot less flex to them. So if you're looking at starting out, you might want to look at getting yourself a set of screw machine length bits. Another topic of general interest is spot drilling. 
that's where you drill a little pip that you're going to start the larger drill in. It's done, spot drilling, to increase hole location accuracy. However, when we use a screw machine length drill, it's shorter, it's more rigid, there's less flex, so right away it's going to be more accurate, and for most applications you won't need to bother spotting. It's also true if you have carbide drills, which are much more rigid. Um, if you are going to spot drill, be sure to use a real spot drill and not a center drill. Center drills are for lathe work. They're more specialized. And these little pilots that you see that are smaller diameter, they're delicate. They break off easily. So a real spot drill will last a lot longer and do a better job for you than a center drill will. Okay, let's talk about our first trouble spot, and that is large diameter holes. The first answer many come to for larger holes is... Hey, let's just use a bigger twist drill. The the name they call these these twist twist drills that have a, a smaller shank, usually a half inch shank, smaller than the bit's diameter, is they're called silver and deming drills. Think about these to keep in mind they require a lot of spindle power. So if your machine isn't up to it, you may have to go with end mill interpolation rather than a bigger twist drill. But if your machine's up for it, a big twist drill will do a great job for you. Interpolation, magic stuff that CNC's can do. What you're doing when you interpolate is you're using your CAM software to generate a helical tool path so that the end mill makes a hole. And here's a little schematic of a helical tool path where the end mill is spinning and it literally goes down to make a larger diameter hole than the end mill. Interpolation is really great because, number one, it requires less, much less spindle power than an equivalent-sized twist drill. And number two, one end mill can do lots of different hole sizes. So you may save on tool changes that way. The thing is, at some point, you're going to want to make a hole that's so big that the twist drill is either way too expensive or your spindle just doesn't have enough power. So when that happens, you're going to love the idea of interpolation. One other thing I want to mention, don't plunge your end mills straight down to make holes unless you have to. Uh, one reason you might have to is you're trying to create a blind hole with a flat bottom. Uh, twist drills have a conical pointed bottom at a particular point angle, and an end mill is flat on the bottom. But the thing is, end mills are much less efficient at plunging to make holes. It's really hard on them, and it's just better in general if you can to use a twist drill instead of an end mill if you're just going to plunge to make a hole. Okay, what about very deep holes? In CNC and machining work, deep is defined by how many diameters the hole is deep. If your hole is four diameters or less deep, so, you know, with a half inch uh, twist drill, that'd be two inches or less deep, no worries, just drill it. Drill straight down and retract when you reach the bottom of the hole. From four to eight diameters deep, you need to do what's called peck drilling. And that's where the drill goes down a ways, retracts a little bit, goes down further, retracts, goes down further, retracts. Something that CNC's do really well. There are a lot of different peck drilling cycles depending on how deep you want to go. And so do a little research on peck drilling before you actually uh, attempt it because there's some ins and outs there that I don't want to get into in this basic video. But peck drilling can really make a difference for you. Once you get over eight diameters deep, you need to switch the type of drill you're using to something called a parabolic flute drill. There's a little schematic here that kind of shows you what's different about the parabola. Uh, the dotted line is a parabolic flute. Uh, if you view them from the side instead of the tip, the helix angle is different. The bottom line is the geometry of these twist drills is tweaked for deep hole work. They can do it faster and better, and they can go deeper than a regular twist drill will go. If you need to go over 20 diameters deep, be aware that's kind of a black art. Do your research carefully. There's some articles on CNC Cookbook about it. But in general, it's going to take a little experimentation for you to master the art of deep hole drilling and how that needs to work for your machine, your material, and your particular application. So what happens if you go too, too deep and you're not following all these techniques and tips and, and rules? 
The answer is the chips will pack up inside the twist drill. They'll jam it. And in the worst case, it'll snap the twist drill. In the best case, it'll tear up the sides of your hole and you won't have a very pretty hole. So just keep that in mind. There are techniques based on how deeply you want to drill. Okay, there's also different qualities of hole. We're machinists. We're used to working in some cases to very tight tolerances. For example, it's not unusual to find that you need a hole to have very tight tolerance on the diameter. The answer to that is not a twist drill. Twist drill is a roughing uh, sort of a tool. If you need a fine finish, a nicer wall finish, and very tight tolerances, you want to use what's called a reamer. And they're pictured here. The thing about the reamer is you pile it with a smaller drill. Uh, typically, uh, there'll be a few thousandths uh, smaller in size than your reamer's diameter. So the reamer's not going to remove very much material, but it's going to do a very careful job removing that material. And these shots here are showing you our G Wizard Feeds and Speeds calculator, which will tell you exactly what size twist drill is needed for a particular size reamer. And it'll also give you the feeds and speeds for the reamer. Okay, it's your turn. You've got this. I've given you the basics on how to choose the best cutting tool for making holes. In our next video, we'll talk about some different kinds of machining and what kinds of tools you need for that. I hope you'll come back and check it out.